We are here not just to transform ourselves, but to transform the energies around us and decide what they are going to become. So when we're surrounded by energies that are freaking us out, when we're surrounded by energies that are unfamiliar, we're actually not utilizing our capacity to transmute that energy into a different vibrational frequency. We are built for transformation. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to blast past subconscious blocks and get your energy flowing again, then do we have the Energy Codes show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Sue Mortar, international speaker, master of bioenergetic medicine, a quantum field visionary, and the author of a brilliant book on energy, The Energy Codes. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about how to remove subconscious blocks and how to change your energy to change your life. That plus we'll talk about crystalline rays of light, cosmic bus stops, Taurus man and camel pose, Sai Baba and colored lights, and what in the world birthdays and four leaf clovers have to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, Sue. Are you ready to shine? <laughs> totally. You are a blast. I absolutely love to be with you. <laughs> it's so fun. So <laughs> uh, it goes, it so goes both ways. So it, it really begets the first question then. Are we all energy? And what does that mean? Well, everything in the universe is energy. Everything in creation is energy. Everything in the material manifest world is energy that is compressing itself into form. And so if you were to unpack everything that exists on this planet and beyond, it would ultimately just become stardust and then it would be invisible energy, which is basically the unified field. So human beings are compressed energy that is compressed all the way to this physical form. And we have multiple layers of who we are uh, generated along the way. So we have layers of intellect, layers of emotional feeling body uh, frequencies, energies of our physicality, our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs, all of it is, is a recipe of vibrational frequencies collected together, uh, generating what we call the human being. So we're not human beings, actually. We're just being human right now. We are energy that is compressing itself into being a human presence here in the third dimension. So it's pretty wild, but that's what's really going on. Very cool. So if we are being human rather than human beings, then with all the energy that's around us, it's neither good nor bad, but we can transform that particularly in ourselves, can't we? Totally. In fact, we are a transforming machine, if you will. We are built for transformation. Uh, we are here not just to transform ourselves, but to transform the energies around us and decide what they are going to become. So when we're surrounded by energies that are, um, you know, freaking us out, when we're surrounded by energies that are unfamiliar, when we're in a circumstance where we're generating energies that are not really kind and self-loving through doubt and fear and self-loathing and a variety of things that happen in our culture, um, we're actually not utilizing our capacity to transmute that, that energy into a different vibrational frequency. So by design, the way our energy system is constructed, it is here to churn up energies and allow them to alchemize into an entirely different um, state, like a washing machine. We're basically like a washing machine. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm so glad you used the word alchemize because I call myself an alchemist, meaning I'm helping treat people to transmute their energy. So what you're really talking about, if I'm getting this right, is we are we are here by design to give back to the field or to put it a different way. I have a huge forest fire only 10 miles from here. There is smoke coming into the house, but I have air filters around the house that can transmute that air and clean it up. And we are each an air filter or a transmuter helping shift the vibration to a higher level. Absolutely. So I have an image that I could show and kind of walk you through it. If I can just show this image, is Would that going to work it. for her? Well, show it to us. Here. And then if you send it to us, we'll put it up as well on the official video. So this would be awesome. Oh, you bet. So, so basically, we are energy that is compressing itself into a ray of light yes. that is descending down and hitting the earth. 
we're utilizing the effects of gravity, we're utilizing the compressive forces in the universe to become, from the unified field, a ray of light that drops itself to the Earth. It hits the Earth and rises back up again, and it then shoots up as high as it can, and then like a fountain, it falls around the outside, it gets taken up again, and we keep recycling and recycling and recycling it. And every time it comes around, we have an opportunity to do something else with it. If we don't have the circuits in place to do that, or we're not aware of how to do that, that energy can take up all kinds of distortions. It generates feelings that we're not familiar with. We don't know what to do with them. So we, we start circumventing and sidestepping parts of our greatness, parts of our capacity to forgive or to let go or to, to decide and to choose the meaning of something. And so, you know, what I do with people is teach them how to build the circuitry here instead of going around these things, which creates a distortion in that energy field and return to this perfected state that we truly are and operate as this ability to take every time this energy comes around and rises up through here, we have an opportunity to love into it, to be empowered by it, to cultivate more wisdom because of it, to utilize it as a gift rather than something we are trying to get away from or sidestep. And so it's really an opportunity. And these times that are upon us are a tremendous opportunity for us to recognize all the ways that we shut down and that we retract and that we withhold our power to transmute energy. We're here like this. You know, think of this like, I think of this like the old fashioned lawnmower where you would push this lawnmower and it wasn't oh, electric yeah. or gasoline. Oh, I used to have it. That had blades that would just chop, 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 chop up the grass. So we are this cylinder of energy. It's like a donut that's rolling around on top of itself all the time, constantly bringing more high frequency energy in and constantly uh, allowing it to have this, this washing effect on our surroundings. We're here to take in our surroundings and turn them into what we choose. But we haven't been taught how to do that or even that that's possible. So we're very disempowered relative to who we could be being. And, and that's what we're going to talk about is empowering people. Now, what I hear behind me, please forgive me. I don't know if anybody's ever told you this to, or not, is I hear, that sounds exhausting, Sue. I am struggling just to survive. And you want me to do and be what during this time? <laughs> you know, here's the deal, Michael. It, you don't have to do anything. It's happening all the time. All we have to do is stop trying to do something else and just let our system do what it's built to do. So it's like, don't write stories. Don't decide that something is good or bad. Just be present with it. Just breathe with it and allow yourself to be okay in the face of anything and discover that you are okay no matter what is actually changing and transforming around you. And when something is happening that you're not in alignment with, mm -hmm. there is a part of you that is here to be transformed by that situation. And so, so it isn't work. We actually have to do less if we're going to be more effective. We overwork in the mental body, which suppresses this system that I was just showing you. When we overthink and overworry and analyze and are addicted to the need to know and predict and control circumstances so that we can create some false sense of safety, that's exhausting. That's why people are wired and uh, needing to caffeinate and not able to settle down into the transformation that's happening inside of humanity right now with grace and ease. So it's not work. It's quite the opposite of that. It's about allowing the universe to flow through you. Your job is to not get in the way and just let it happen. Woohoo! I, I have a <laughs> mantra. I call it, and it, it came about after my first near-death experience when I learned that being Sisyphus, pushing the stone uphill might not be the answer. Kind, gentle, easy, good. Kind, yeah. gentle. The kinder, the gentler, the easier we go, the more goodness we bring in. So I want to go from there. I want to talk about quantum flips, and then we're going to go into some techniques, heavy on techniques today. But Talking about a quantum flip or switching things, years ago, you got some terrible news. Your dad had just passed away. You got some terrible news right before you went on stage. How in the world did you flip that energy? Because that is not the time when you want to be handling with that, that kind of news. Right, right. So I, I was about to go on stage and I received an email that, that basically said that, that the um, the heavy content of my father's will, uh, he had just passed in, uh, several weeks before, that the majority of that was going to go to my siblings instead of to me. And that it wasn't about the money and that kind of thing. It was just this idea that, that your father could sort it out and decide 
this is, you know, this is going to go here and not so much over there and that kind of thing. It just felt like this huge withdrawal of love and, and boom, you know, it hit me in the gut and was extraordinarily painful. And so what I, what I realized in that moment was something that I'd been teaching other people for many, many years based on other things that I had experienced and knew that this was the key. And I realized that that I had I had to do some of the work that I teach in that moment to be able to go on stage. And so I anchored in my core, which I can share today. Yes. I started running energy up and down the central channel, which I'll share with everybody today. I knew where specifically I needed to build some circuits. Uh, and I'll share people with, you know, share with people today how they can do this too, so that I could run more profound energy through my system without the wobble that had just, uh, you know, uh, occurred in my system. And so I did the work and within minutes was able to, you know, rise up onto the stage. I was the only one teaching for three days. And so there was a lot of energy rushing through this and hundreds of people in the audience and, you know, a great expectation was able to, you know, with ease and grace, totally deliver a very meaningful program for people um, to the degree that I could at the end of the program even, you know, just share what was going on with me and not have to uh, suppress it or hide it or divert it, deflect it. There's, so there's no bypass happening here. It's a transformation that happens. And what happened as I came through that process, I realized that that I didn't receive any that kind of support actually because I didn't need that kind of support. I, I recognized that that if I had needed it, the universe would have would have would have supplied it. If I'd have needed the unconditional love, it would have been there. If I'd have needed the the, the resourceful items or even the sentimental objects that that were that would would have been included in that, my mother had predeceased him, and so so this was it. You know, um, that if I if I really needed that, that I would have been provided with that. And to, to flip it over like that, yeah. instead of like, how am I going to heal from this devastating circumstance? It wasn't that. By building the circuitry, I knew there's something, there's some higher purpose here, and I can't figure it out yet, but I know that it's there, and that's what stabilized me. And then as I walked through the, those moments and into the, into the weeks that followed, I totally realized that, wow, I got it. I totally got it. This, this didn't happen because I didn't need it to happen. And when we recognize our greatness, when we truly do the humbling thing that is called accepting your greatness, uh, which is a very humbling act to, to disassemble your ego that thinks you're unworthy or that thinks you're not enough or that thinks you don't measure up or that it's just stuck inside of that. When we do whatever it takes to surrender that, then something rises up from inside of us that is totally fine, that is more than fine, that is so abundant that it has enough to share with others without having to constantly receive in order to heal. It's not about that. It's about revealing our magnificence and, and, and authentically connecting with that magnificence so that it can authentically and unwaveringly be revealed. Thank you. Thank you. Would you say your dad, forgive me for putting it this way, was being a wascally wabbit? <laughs> you know what he was being? He was being exactly what I asked him to be in some soulful contract that we made before we ever came in to this life. He, he agreed, okay, just when you least expect it, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to nail this and you're going to have to, you know, find yourself in that moment. And, and I said, exactly. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in going into this lifetime and waking up to the fullness of my being and feeling what it feels like to actually let that be true. Apparently, I had that conversation because that's what's been going down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dive into some of these techniques, and we're going to get more into what and why is going on. But, but you mentioned first the core. What can you tell us about yeah. this? You bet. So we have to anchor ourselves in our core. We live in our heads, mm -hmm. and we live out here outside the body in the mental body of energies. I have a, another little image here I think I can share with you that this is who we think we are, but this is actually who we are. These and radiating job, waves of energy coming out from, from uh, uh, inside of our body for those following on audio. Okay, so, so I, I'm showing an image of a person standing here, yep. multiple layers of energy surrounding the body. Yep. We live out here outside of the body in those energies of thinking. This red line right here is the mental body. It's where we think and analyze and predict and it's where all of our beliefs reside and it is it is what we continually perceive as as is true and we live out there in that red line like three layers out from where we're supposed to be our job 
is actually to realize that we're much higher frequency than that. Like six bandwidths out from there, we're this pure unified field, this spirit being. And our journey here is about coming all the way into the body. Our journey is about embodiment. We come to earth and take a body and we want to learn how to come from the, the unified field of consciousness that we are and embody. We want to come here all the way fully here. And so, so on the way here, we get stuck right here in this land of beliefs and emotional states that are wobbly and distorted and so forth. And so we never really make it to full embodiment completely until we do. And so we end up in conversations like this because we're seeking to know the rest of the story. We're, we're seeking to understand the rest of who we are. And so in the midst of this, we have to learn to anchor ourselves right here in the body. We have to get in our bodies instead of, for those that are listening on audio, you could just think of it this way. Instead of living in my head, if I lived all the way in my whole body, my body could act as a filtering mechanism because energies rise from the tip of my spine mm -hmm. up to my brain and my head. And they rise up from the tip of my spine upward because there are 11 billion bits of information that are bombarding us every millisecond and they arrive to the body at the gut level and then through epigenetics and the little antennas on the surface of our cells of our endocrine glands those those impulses of information become chemicals and then and they become nerve impulses and that information rises up through our heart and gets filtered again through this magnificent brain of the heart which is actually more brilliant than the brain in our head and then that energy filters through that and rises up to the brain in our head so that we can filter this cosmic universal intelligence mm -hmm. and make images and impressions and thoughts and ideas that are in alignment with this universal information that's coming in every millisecond in the billions of, of uh, numbers. So we're here as this connectivity place, this place of, of connection mm -hmm. and that's what makes it easy for us to transmute things when we realize the truth of who we are and how big our being truly is. So, so we have to anchor ourselves in the body so that the body can act as the filtering mechanism that it is designed to be. So if everyone just squeeze your shoulder blades together right now and drop them down toward your, toward your low, low back, just drop them down. It opens up the front side of your heart. Now just lean back against your spine just a little bit and it opens up this channel inside your body. Mm -hmm. Now breathe in your belly. Just breathe in your belly and keep your shoulder blades just anchored like that. Okay, now there are a, there's an additional group of muscles in the pelvic bowl that if you could contract them, it will also help anchor you in your body. So as, as if you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop the stream quickly like that, you'd squeeze certain muscles to do that. It's the muscles of the perineum. If you could just contract those muscles, lean back against your spine, which opens up the channel, breathe in your belly, just contract those muscles like that right now and drop your shoulder blades down. And it just anchors us deep in our torso. It's a beautiful way to anchor us and get us in our body. Now keep breathing in your belly. And there's one more thing I wanna to add to it. Roll your eyes up for just a moment, open or closed, doesn't matter. When you roll them up, you can feel some tension right behind your eyes. That puts you right in the place where the pineal gland is, the third eye. And when the pineal gland is starting to get activated because more energy is going there, we start to have a sense of self that cultivates over time. So if you took that place right behind your eyes and you dropped a plumb line right down through that where your shoulder blades are drawn together and anchored down and then where those muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl are contracting for just this moment and you just breathe in your belly. As if you're breathing a line of connection from the back of your eyes into your heart, into your belly. This has a tremendous anchoring effect of the energy field landing it in the body so that it can start to stabilize. And then it starts to enliven and activate the levels of consciousness that are housed in the gut, in the heart center, in the throat center, in the third eye area, in the crown center, etc. Not to mention our rooted groundedness here in our root chakra, etc. Wow. So the expression that's coming to mind is it's ending the cosmic warble inside of us. Yes. Yes. There is a a wobble, a warble that happens that is this confluence of energies that are coming together. When we feel a certain way and yet someone is acting a different way, when we want to open our hearts yet someone acts in ways that's not comfortable for us or 
when we want to follow our heart's passion, but it doesn't look like opportunity is there. It doesn't look like I have enough money to do it or enough time or resources in some way. Or when we want to forgive something that's just been plaguing us for years, it creates all these different energies that are desires and constrictions. And ultimately, those expansive desires and those anchoring constrictions are supposed to work together in a way that grounds us yeah. and allows us to to uh, collaborate with the universal energy. There's a universal pulse that's happening all the time, and it is an expansion and an anchoring, and an expansion and an anchoring, and an expansion and an anchoring, and an expansion and an anchoring. And we're supposed to be a part of that because everything is expanding. Our Consciousness is expanding. Humanity is expanding its ability to perceive the truth of who we are and what's really going on, which is why we're able to have conversations like this today that 10 years ago were a little strained. 20 years ago, it was like, hmm, a little too out there. 30 years ago, it was like, we don't even talk about it because yeah. it's just too weird. But what's happening right now is we're waking up to a version of us that is much bigger, much more capable than the fear-based stimulus response reactive individuals that that we used to be in such a greater degree. What's interesting to me, it, it, it sounds like what we're describing is, is rock climbing. You put in a pin, you pull yourself up, you put in a pin, you pull yourself up, and you're continuously going up and up. When we're talking about removing subconscious blocks, in a sense, which is what we're talking about a bit here today, we're not talking about actually going to the word. We're talking about getting that energy flowing. They melt away and we can expand. Yes. The energy will pierce through these veils that we were speaking about earlier. You know, we see this toric field flow that's flowing out the top of the head and comes around the outside of the body and rises up through the center of the body again. And it goes back and forth, avoiding areas where we don't have circuits in place. These are the blocks that people talk about. The blocks block these aspects of us from integrating with each other so that we're powerful and loving and can manifest what we want and we're healthy and strong and we're capable of recognizing ourselves as a multidimensional being. Uh, when those aspects of us are integrated and working together, there's no stopping us. And until then, we are wobbling here and creating distortions and interacting as if the distortion that we're looking at is true. It isn't. There's another meaning behind the things that we see that is actually in support of us. And we just have to learn how to perceive it that way. Beautiful. What is that, what you call subconscious interference? Yes. Yeah, so subconscious interference would be just what I'm speaking about right here. This interference, people aren't aware of it. They're aware that they get a knot in their stomach or a lump in their throat or tightness in their chest, but they're not aware that that's actually trying to call their attention onto the soulful self, this deep integral in, in individual that is the healer within, mm -hmm. that is the creative um, genius within. And when we can pull our mind onto that creative genius, it starts to rise and starts to emerge and until we access that subconscious interference, that those interferences that are below the level of our awareness on the average day, when we can drop in and start to melt that, that interference or those blockages, then this energy starts to rush in a more robust fashion through the body automatically. It's not something that we have to work at. It's, it's, it's something that we finally get out of the way of that which has always been trying to support us and guide us and expand us into our our true greatness in this lifetime. Woohoo! Let's uh, let's talk about our breath for a moment because this, this room, this environment is still smoky. The winds are changing, so I can see it's getting a little bit clearer outside. We've got that fire about ten miles away, and I am running energy with my breath right now. I'm creating a toric field and running energy, which is actually anchoring me and grounding me. Even though there's a natural reaction to smelling smoke, and that is flea. But I don't think you're sensing flea off of me right now. So how can we use our breath? to change our energy. Sure. So breath in the body is spirit in the body. So like, think of that. If I stop breathing, the spirit leaves the body. If mm -hmm. I stop breathing forever, you know, like I take my last breath, spirit it descends from this, this end of the spectrum mm -hmm. and emerges back into this unified field again. So when we're embodying, we start breathing. When we take our first breath, we're landing in this physical dimension and we continue to breathe as a natural mechanism which keeps us animated here in the physical mm -hmm. world. And so when we bring consciousness onto the breath, yep. it magnifies what the breath is doing. So this toric field that we've been mentioning, 
this toric field that we've been mentioning is always happening. We don't create this, but but the breath keeps it moving, keeps it animated, keeps it enhanced. When our consciousness is on our breath, which is keeping it moving mm -hmm. and animated and enhanced, it makes it even more robust because the mind and consciousness magnify things. When you become consciously aware of something, it magnifies it in your life. When you pay attention to your problems, your problems get bigger. When you pay attention to love, love gets bigger. When you pay attention to possibility, possibility gets bigger because the mind is a magnifier. So I have to become cognizant of what I'm landing my mind on. Am I constantly ruminating about the problem mm -hmm. or am I putting my mind consciously and intentionally on possibility? Well, the invitation in this conversation is put your mind on possibility and put your mind on the true soulful self, on the essence within your deep core, because that essence is the concentrated, pure, high frequency energy that is the truth of you, the pure presence itself. So breath is spirit in the body. Spirit in the body is the highest vibration of who we are. It's pure, you know, uninterrupted energy. And so, so we're breathing with our conscious awareness in this central channel, and let's do that. Let's, let's pull our shoulder blades together and drop them down. Mm -hmm. Let's contract the muscles again in that pelvic bowl. It's called mula bandha, mm -hmm. or root lock, and just contract the muscles as if you were going to the bathroom. You had to stop it for just a moment there. And now breathe in your belly, shoulder blades together, breathing in your belly, not in your upper chest. Breathe in your belly. And then roll your eyes up and you find that place in the center of the brain, right there, center of the brain, heart space, shoulder blades pulled together and drop down, mula bandha, root lock in the belly. And now I have these three brains that are starting to connect with each other. Now let's merge them by taking a breath from above your head, breathe into the center of the brain, breathe into your heart, breathe all the way down to your belly. This line, just as if you're just pretend you can breathe in through the top of your head, through the center of your brain, your throat, your heart, into your belly. Squeeze that mula bandha, squeeze at the base of the pelvic bowl, and then exhale, just shoot that breath right down into the earth. And then take a deep breath up from the earth and draw the energies of Mother Nature with you. Draw the support of Mother Gaia, total alpha frequency, frequency stabilizing, harmonizing to the body. Breathe up into the belly, open your heart, breathe into your heart, anchor with your shoulder blades together and down. There it is, open that heart, open the throat, and then exhale up through the throat, up, roll your eyes, find that tension behind the eyes. That's your point that you can feel and shoot the breath right up behind that and out the top of your head. Then inhale from above your head, right behind your eyes, through your throat, to your heart, to your belly. And then squeeze those muscles at the base of the pelvic bowl and keep them squeezed, but exhale and shoot the breath right through those squeezed muscles, right down into the earth. Breathe up from inside the earth into the belly and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Roll your eyes up and then exhale up through your heart, up through your throat, up through the center of the brain and out the top of your head. Now that's a central channel breath. When we breathe this way, mm -hmm. we begin to change everything. We begin to organize all these warbling different cosmic energies and all these experiences that we've been through and that we're worrying about going through in the future and they start to follow this organized breath pattern. Everything follows your breath. Consciousness will follow your breath. Energy follows your consciousness. So you direct your breath in a certain way. Energy will flow in that way and it will become magnified because of your intention. When this energy in your central channel becomes magnified, mm -hmm. you develop a sense of presence that anchors you and lands you here. With that presence, you can look around and see what's happening, but you don't get reactive to it. We get reactive when we're living in our heads and on the surface of life, and we're not anchored and embodied. We're not grounded. So we have to ground ourselves with the body in this way. And that begins this super highway between our three brains. I can't help but seeing it. Um, we just got a vehicle, little mini Cooper that we're going to be towing behind an RV for a tour this fall where we're going to help to illuminate people across the country. Social distancing notwithstanding, we'll be in an RV towing our little mini. And, and today I had to choose LED lights, brighter lights for the vehicle. And so when you're mentioning human and I'm picturing the Taurus, I'm actually picturing an LED light. I can see all the chakras in the LED light. I can see this Taurus of energy going on. And I realize what you're doing is you're building a channel for us to glow brighter. And when we illuminate enough, actually every little bit helps, we're starting to illuminate and change the presence of everyone and everything around us. 
we glow. You know, you can be in a completely dark cave and strike one match, and the amount of space that gets lighted um, is exponential compared to this tiny little match in a big, vast cave. And this is what's happening when we start to illuminate. We start to create a bigger and bigger field. When we are anchoring in our core, and this might shock people, when we anchor in our core and concentrate our consciousness deep in the central channel, Mm -hmm. the energy field gets exponentially larger, and we're not trying to make it larger, we're just minding our own business. We're just right here, tending to the self, tending to the soul with the mind, and serving it with conscious breath. When we do that, the glow exponentially, quantumly increases And it has a stabilizing effect on the energy fields of people miles away. And the higher we can radiate and emanate our energy, vibrate our energy, the bigger the field gets. We do so by concentrating it even more. We want to develop an ability to find these tiny little nuances and details to concentrate all this energy right inside this very narrow central channel. And what happens is... The energy field exponentially uh, impacts these highest frequency bandwidths Mm -hmm. that that influence all of humanity around the globe. So by doing our own work right here, we're tapping into a vibrational frequency that everyone has in common. And when we start tapping that one, we become a healer without even trying. We become healed without even trying. We become ingenious. We become innovative. We become the, the, the amazing creative presence that we came into this life to be. So we start manifesting. We start having life unfold with opportunities, having no idea how things even came to be. But that's exactly how it happens. Woohoo! It <laughs> makes me think, and I want to dive into the clearing code here, but it makes me think we're, we're uh, training ourselves. I, I like to call it Zen, Zen warrior training or open-hearted warrior training, but really what we're training to become is, is the biggest, baddest, boldest tree that we can be because the tree roots and then it emanates. It's putting out oxygen. It's putting out energy. It's healing everything around it just through its beingness by being rooted. Totally. The more we root, the more we ground, the bigger the field gets. Without trying, it just happens. And the tree can't get bigger unless the roots go deeper. That's exactly what we're doing with this work. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you tell us, what is the clearing code? So the clearing code is a way that we can begin. Um, it's one of the seven energy codes that I wrote about in the book, The Energy Codes. And, and the clearing code allows us to clear subconscious interference Mm -hmm. that we're not aware of and it allows us to use the body to tell us what it is that needs to be cleared and then we use the body and the mind and the breath to clear it so we can identify the subconscious reason underneath why we are not um, able to take action on something that we really want to do we keep procrastinating or we're not able to let go of something that we really need to let go of so that we can move on to something bigger and greater in our lives or uh, we're not able to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and fall in love or or whatever the case may be maybe there's something physical that we're not healing or perhaps there's subconscious residue rising inside of us which is happening all across the world right now because of this increased compression of energy because everyone's in question When that big wobble sets up, it creates a thickness in the space in between the people, and it compresses our energy field. And inside that compression, what rises up is the stuff that needs to be healed, the stuff that needs to be cleared, the stuff that needs to be be dissolved. So we don't have to get rid of it, because then somebody else will just pick it up and step in it, and then they're carrying it around. We want to transmute it, and that's what we're learning how to do in the clearing code. We're learning how to transmute the energies that are creating these stuck blockages that are keeping us from being able to see the benefit in everything and to choose, keeping us from being able to choose that everything that's happening in my life is going to serve me. It's going to serve me, it serve me to awaken me to the greatness that humanity truly is. And, uh, and so until we learn how to clear those things, we're blocked and bogged down with an entirely different perspective on what's going on in the outer world. So maybe you can help us to give us one technique to work on this transmutation, because I can't help. You, you cannot make me less positive about anything. I only see positive possibilities. That doesn't mean grief isn't grief. It doesn't mean we're losing people. And I am not making light of that at all. 
However, globally, I see this as an incredible opportunity for clearing, for healing, for transmutation. You bet. So, you know, there's, there, are, there are several things that we can do. One is when, when we think about something that is upsetting to us right now, mm-hmm. and there, you know, lots of people have lots of things. Maybe they've lost their job. Maybe they, they are afraid for a family member. Maybe they've lost family. Maybe they've lost friends. Maybe they have been sick, and, and, and they're just kind of coming up and out of it uh, enough to even be joining us here today. And, uh, and, and I just want you to pick something in this moment that, that has an upsetting or a discordant energy to it, something that's a challenge. And, and just think about it for a moment. And, and when you think about it and the effects that it's had on you or a fear or concern that is looming, and you think about that, there is an energy that will become accentuated in your body somewhere, either in your throat or in the center of your head or in your chest, maybe it gets tight, or maybe there's a knot in your stomach or a lump in your throat, something begins to happen the more you think about this issue. Now, rightfully so. But the reason that the issue is upsetting you is because you don't have this super highway connected between these three brains. And so there is, the mind steps in and tries to write stories to predict things and to see what we need to do to be safe. And, and that's a waste of our energy. What we have to do instead is Pay attention to what inside the body is being activated and squeeze it back. So just take note. Did your throat get tight? Did your chest get tight? Did your, did your stomach get tight? Something happened. Something became accentuated or something became constricted. Or maybe your mind just went somewhere, but you didn't really feel anything. But for whatever reason, your mind just went to your throat or to your solar plexus or to deep in your gut. So I'm going to invite you just to squeeze it back. Just hug it on the inside of your body. Just do something to accentuate that area of the body on the inside, to draw all of your attention to that area. And then start doing those same things that we were doing before. Pull your shoulder blades together and drop them down. Breathe in your belly. Squeeze those muscles at the base of the pelvic bowl, mula bandha, that root lock. Roll your eyes for just a moment and find that tension behind the eyes. Find the central channel and start breathing up and down it. Just breathe up and down the central channel. Breathe into your belly and then exhale into the earth. Breathe up from the earth and into your belly and then exhale up your body and out the top of your head. And now go back to that area of the body that you need to hug or squeeze or accentuate and hug it or squeeze it or accentuate it, this part of the body that was reactive to this upset, this upset thought. Just go in there. Just love right into that spot. Just hug it as if you're embracing some lost friend and you're finding it again. And as you find this, allow the love to pour into it. And now continue to breathe just up and down that central channel. It's really easy. It's really easy. Just breathe up and you can't do it wrong. Just breathe up and down the central channel, inhaling, squeezing this area and exhaling into the earth and inhaling up from the earth and squeezing this area and exhale up through your body, up through the head and out the top of the crown and inhale from the crown, the center of the of the brain and the throat and the heart and the belly. Keep this one area in particularly squeezed. Maybe squeeze a few of those other anchor points we talked about. Exhale into the earth. And breathe up from the earth into the belly, into the heart. Keep this one area really accentuated and keep your mind really focused on that area. And exhale up through your heart and your throat, center the brain and out your crown. And as you continue to do that, you'll start to notice that something starts to feel emanating off of the surface of your body. Something starts to glow. There's something that's made, made way for. There is, there is a connection happening. And as that connection is happening, we begin to emanate and radiate possibility because we're made of that possibility. And now we're learning how to build the circuitry for those possibilities to become obvious to our wakefulness, our consciousness. Woohoo! <laughs> so, Michael, what this does is it clears... <laughs> A blockage. Because the reason that we felt an area was because that energy was trying to rise up and it hit this area to go around it, to keep going. When it hits it, we feel that like a knot in our stomach or tightness in our chest. That's what's happening there. And so what we're doing is hugging that and, and working right there with it and allowing ourselves to go through that instead of going around it. And when we go through it, it starts to open a flow 
that was always meant to be there. But we shut it down when we were two or five or 25. And we didn't realize that we were doing that. And we've been compensating for it ever since. Thank you. You you talk about and you share a story in the book of somebody who had a failure to thrive diagnosis. And I believe it's something that a lot of us are facing right now. What is a technique that we can use to massage and need that to get the energy flowing again? You bet. So everything that we've been doing will contribute to that. Okay. First of all, everything that we've already talked about, these anchor points in the body, squeezing at the base of the pelvic bowl, shoulder blades together and down, rolling the eyes and finding that central channel, feeling myself in there, feeling myself in the body, and then breathing up and down the central channel. That's going to help. Then on top of that, you think of something that's upsetting to you, or you think about a dream that you'd love to have manifest in your life. Either way, there's going to be a charge somewhere up and down this central channel. You squeeze that too and bring your consciousness to it and keep breathing up and down that central channel and allow yourself to carve through these things that we've been going around. That's one thing. Tremendously beneficial. We've already learned it. Now there's another way of breathing that will also help you because the universe is breathing like this. Mm -hmm. It's a spherical reality. Reality is a giant sphere, okay? And so when we can do spherical breathing, we start to kind of align. We, we hook onto the wave and we get carried into this huge genius that is breathing itself called the universal presence, the universal mind, universal love, the animation of consciousness itself. And we are that, we are that, we just don't know it. So when I had this great awakening, I have another image here to show you. This is who we think we are down here with this toric field, and we have this higher self up above us. I woke up up here. My quantum flip was to be this. I was this, and I knew that my journey was to become this. Most people think this is who we are, and this is what we're seeking. Not true. Flip it over. This is who you are, and this is what you're doing. And so when that happened, I was breathing in, in the way I'm going to share with you right now. That's what lit it up, and that's what was happening the whole time that I was initially in this state. So you were initially, just, just for the audio, it, it looks like a giant sun with this spherical rainbow around you. That's who we are, up in the heavens, shining light over everything, and then to bring it back to embody into man. All the way down to physical dimension, through a ray of light into the physical body. And this is what we are. We're rays of light. So when I lit up there... Uh, I knew in an instant, whoa, you know, we are not who we think we are. And I devoted my life for 10 years to figure out how do I get back to that. And after about five years, I figured it out. And then the next five years, I really perfected it. And then I started teaching this work to other people. And, and what, what, what part of it was, was this spherical breathing. That's part of the recipe. Mm -hmm. So I want to just have everyone right now just breathe in your belly Keep inhaling, breathe in, stretch open your solar plexus. Keep inhaling and breathe into your upper lobes of your lungs. Inhale bigger than the body. And then exhale out in every direction, in front of you, behind you, to the left, to the right, above and below. And then inhale from every direction, above and below, left, right, front, back, into the belly, into the solar plexus, into the upper lobes of your lungs. Inhale bigger than the body. And then exhale in every direction. And then inhale from every direction into your belly. Stretch open your solar plexus. Breathe through that. Stretch into the upper lobes of your lungs. Breathe in there. Breathe bigger than your body. And then exhale in every direction. And inhale into your belly. Keep inhaling and stretch open your solar plexus. Inhale to the upper lobes of your lungs. Inhale bigger than the body. Exhale in every direction. Inhale into your belly. Stretch open the solar plexus. Inhale into the upper lobes of the lungs. Inhale bigger than the body and hold your breath in. Drop your shoulders. Sip some more breath in. Bigger than the body. Hold it in. Sip some more breath in. Bigger than the body. Roll your eyes up. Exhale right up through that tension behind your eyes and out your crown. Inhale from overhead into the center of your brain. Open your throat. Breathe all the way to your belly. 
I'm just grounding us right now. And then exhale into the earth. Deep breath into the belly. Just exhale. Ha. Ah. So this part of it, that was this spherical breathing, belly, solar plexus, upper lobes, bigger than the body, exhale in every direction, inhale from every direction into the belly, mm -hmm. into the solar plexus, into the upper lobes of the lungs, bigger than the body, exhale in every direction, inhale into the belly. It creates this spherical breath. If a person would sit and do that for 15 or 20 minutes, just over and over and over, you will have tremendous transcendental energies infiltrating into your system, which will soothe, soothe, soothe the idea of inadequacy, insufficiency. It will soothe and dissolve subconscious interferences that have us thinking that we are caught up in something bigger than us because it isn't true. And this spherical breathing aligns you with a universal pulse that is happening. Right now, if everyone would just turn your palms up for just a moment and just feel a pulsation. There's a pulsation happening here. And I'm just going to trace it for you. It's, it's here. And it's pulsating. Boom. 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 It's not the heartbeat. It exists in the developing embryo before there is even a heart to beat. It's a universal pulse. It's a communication system. It's a waves of these billions of bits of information that are flowing all the time. And as we train the mind to find it, it magnifies it. Now let's just slowly bring our hands toward each other, but don't touch them. Leave them like a foot apart and just press them slightly in and out toward each other until you can feel some resistance in between them. There's something there between my hands. If you can't feel it, separate them out just a little bit more and then press them just gently toward each other. There's a thickness between your hands. And when it starts to concentrate because you open your heart even more, that thickness starts to fill your system. You're dialing into an energy frequency that is the unified field. It allows you to sense and feel and perceive yourself at a different realm level, a different vibrational frequency than the one we're used to operating from, from our five senses. Sometimes you can hold your hands like this and then you try to pull them apart and they won't even pull apart because there's something holding them together or they won't push together because there's something so thick there that's right there present. Open your heart, slow down your mind, slow down your breath and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and you'll be able to feel it more and more. Whenever you are worried or you're caught up in the news or the stories of our lives right now, Find this station, find this vibration, find that energy through this spherical breathing and then finding the pulse and then feeling that energy in the invisible space between us. Because when we start to animate and relate to that invisible energy between us, we start to bond each other together in a way. We unify and we start to discover the bigness of our being and the common ground that we all walk on. Thank you. And it sounds like this is something that we can do throughout the day. It's not just when we're sitting in a chair. In fact, you would encourage us to take breaks, get up from our sitting time and do exercises like this. We can be working on this breath almost any time and anywhere. All the time. All the time. I'm always breathing this way. You know, we're going to be breathing all day long, right? <laughs> it might as well be a conscious breath. It might as well be a breath that's going to make a difference in my life, in my perception of self and raise my reality into a different bird's eye view so that I can see what's really going on here is that consciousness is expanding and inside my life experience, everything that I encounter is there so that I can be nudged up into a bigger perspective of who I really am. It's not ever trying to take us down, nothing is. And if we're perceiving it that way, we have a perception issue and we need to change our perspective and building the circuits the way that I'm talking about, learning how to build these things so that we're not going around blockages and compensating for them, by building the circuits that go straight through them, we are able to start to raise our perspective and see from a bigger bird's eye view, a bigger perceptive level, and our reality changes as, 
as a byproduct of this. It's interesting. We just rescued a couple weeks ago. They say, why does the chicken cross the road? And we had a chicken run across the highway in front of us about uh, almost three weeks ago now. Her name is Ruby Rue now, and, and she is inseparable for us. What my, my wife is down with her right now is, is working indoors with her by her side. And, and I have recognized that one of the reasons that Ruby Rue came into our life, and she knows the command, come now. She knows how to come and stay at the front door. We're working on potty training to take her on our RV tour. But we are learning that she came into our lives to give us a different perspective because she's very myopic. She can't see far away, but she can see worms with laser-like precision. Uh, and so we're learning a bird's eye point of view. Right. With great detail from, uh, from afar, from aloft. It allows us to see the stories of our lives from the perspective of there's something good happening here and it's in service to me. It's trying to show me that I'm greater than I thought I was. So we ask questions like, what is the universe asking of me right now? What is it that I am to become? What am I here to allow myself to remember that I already am? Because we are made of the cosmos. We're literally made of stardust that is compressed into form. There's nothing bigger than that. There's nothing more expansive than that. So there are little organelles inside of our cells that relate to the planets that circle overhead. And those planets are influenced by the constellations that are circling over them. And the constellations are influencing each other inside the entire Milky Way in our galaxy. And our galaxy is being influenced by other galaxies that are spinning around in this collaborative harmonic energy all the way down to the tiny organelles in our cells. We are all of that. We are that. We tend to perceive ourselves as this person in this body and all that might be out there. And the quantum flip is really about realizing, no, I'm the one that's out there and I'm coming all the way down here into this body. That's how big I am. And we have to learn to perceive ourselves this way. If we're going to take the happenings that are occurring on our planet right now yeah. and turn them into something that's going to serve us instead of something that's going to scare us, turn it into allowing uh, us allowing uh, ourselves to recognize that we are bigger than any virus. We are bigger than any bacteria. We're bigger than any fungus. We're, we are bigger. Even, even the greatest scientists of our history have told us that it isn't about the bug, it's about the health of the host. Yes. It's about who we are and our vital force that we perceive ourselves to be and allow that energy to flow robustly. And when we do that, we can transmute anything. And that's what we're here to awaken to. Woohoo! <laughs> Since we're, we're talking about perspective, one more exercise. Could you share with us, what is the subject-object-subject exercise? Oh, beautiful. Subject-object-subject. It's fantastic. You know, when we land here, we kind of splat and we disperse. And we start looking around like, who am I? What's going on? Who do I please? How do I, how do I belong? How, what, what do I do? How do I get fed? What do I have to do to, to be in the good graces of these big people who are taking care of me? And so we disperse our energies and they all get externally oriented. And we get hooked into that. And so we're always referencing the outer world and it just further disperses our energy all the time. So right now, if, if, if someone wants to gather their energy back, just gather all your energy into your core. But let me show you a point of relativity. Right now, throw your energy off of you and onto the computer screen or onto some object in your room. Just throw all your energy over there the way that you would if somebody who pushed your buttons walked in the room. Somebody who pushes your buttons, walking in the room right now, there they are, boom, all your energy just goes right to them. That's it. You disempower you and you give them your power. You don't even know you're doing it. It's just like, bah. Okay? Now, I just want to invite you, call it back. Just claim your energy back. Literally, scoop your energy back up. You don't have to use your hands and, you know, you can do this anywhere, anytime. Just call it back onto yourself. Come on to subject instead of the object that you were giving your energy to. Come on to subject. Notice how it feels in your body when you call it back home. Now, let's throw it back onto the object. Just disperse it. Throw it back over there. Give button pusher all of your energy, okay? Notice how you feel in your body. It's disempowering, feels nauseating, it's horrific, okay? Claim it back. Yeah, thank you just a second. I'm gonna pull that right back here where it belongs. Yeah. Gather onto subject. Notice how it feels in your body. Subject, object, Subject, do it a thousand times a day until you realize that in any instant of your life, any instant, no matter what, when things scare you or things rob you of your energy, you're going on to object. You're dispersing your energy again. Just claim it back. Use the anchor points and central channel breathing to stay there. That's what those skills and tools are for so that we can 
walk and talk and live and breathe as the collected, unsplatted, the collected, gathered, loving presence, genius that we truly are. Woohoo! Subject, Tell- object, subject. Love it. Subject, object, subject, thousand times a day. Check, check, check. Got a couple more questions. Before I do that, where can people go to find out more, to find your beautiful book, The Energy Codes, to participate in your remote healing Facebook video healing challenge and healing transmission and the remote healing transmission and techniques introduction? Ah, well, we got all kinds of things going on right now. So, yes, this remote healing thing is, it's about... Learning how to transmit the energies that you are because it's needed for manifestation, Mm -hmm. but it's also needed for helping others to heal. It's needed to be a beneficial presence on the planet, and it's needed to dissolve the blocks that are rising up inside of us at the subconscious level. We're here to dissolve those subconscious interferences and allow this emanation of universal intelligence to come through us in an organized way. So they can join us on our Facebook challenge, which is coming up on August 24th, 25th, 26th, and then a healing transmission on the 27th, which is a huge global event. We have the thousands of people that will be joining in. And, and then on the weekend of the 29th and 30th, a remote healing technique and transmission uh, workshop that we're, that we're offering to drop people in to learning how to be this transmitting, transmuting uh, healing presence on the planet. And uh, they can come to drsuemorter.com, D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com, and you can find all that information. You can find us on Facebook and join us in the Facebook challenge, which starts August 24th. So... Excellent, excellent, excellent. And if you didn't catch drsuemorder.com, come on over to inspirenationshow.com. We'll get you over to drsuemorder.com. Just two last questions for you. This has truly been phenomenal, Sue. First off, what's it mean to make a front side impact in the world? To make a, I'm sorry, what? Front side impact. Okay, a front side impact. It means, I have this model of consciousness that I talk about inside my book called The Energy Codes, which teaches you seven specific codes of working with energy for all kinds of purposes in your life, to heal your body, to awaken to your high genius potential, and to live the life that we truly came here to live. And um, inside of that book, I talk about a model of consciousness. The backside of the model uh, is where we are victimized and thinking that the outer world is bigger than us. And we, we think that we are under the influence of other people's actions and beliefs and, and uh, policies and procedures that get laid in, in front of our tracks. And, and the front side of the model allows us to realize that, hey, no matter what's going on in the outer world, I am here to transmute it and turn it into something that is going to serve and be a beneficial impact on the world just by my loving presence, just by my ability to transmute these energies. So I'm teaching people how to do that. The front side of the model is living as a creator, not waiting to for a sign, not being a better responder, not living in relativity to something that someone else has created, but rather living and breathing as a creative force on the planet, because that's what we're supposed to be doing here. That's who we are and what we're made for, and it's time for us to recognize that and to enable that to be the case on an ongoing basis. So front side of the model impact is creative genius uh, in action. And that's what I'm really teaching people how to access within themselves because they're made of that. And we might as well be living as that. Couldn't agree more. And that's a mighty woohoo. Any last words of wisdom, Sue, you want to share with people today? Oh my goodness. You know, I think we've already covered. There's nothing broken. There's nothing wrong. There is nothing missing in any of us. No way. It's impossible. It's literally a scientific impossibility for someone to be inadequate. And so the electromagnetic forces that we are, that are representative of the mind and the heart and the deep core wisdom is the collection of both. When we align those energies in this way, we get to have access to the deep ancient wisdom that we are, the universal multidimensional being that we are landing into that ancient wisdom and our loving heart uh, combined. When those energies come together, we literally are liberated and we are able to liberate others because of how we see the world. We just have to learn how to put our pieces together in a way that is literally how they were designed to be functioning. It's been hidden in a puzzle because we wanted to come here and figure it out because we're made of creativity and we wanted to feel ourselves generating that um, by design. 
So, uh, so that is it. There's no way that these things cannot work for you and that you could not see that this is a time of great benefit on our planet and it's here for you. It's not against you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like ready to cry. This has been so, so beautiful, Sue. Thank Thank you you so, so much. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get the energy codes and begin changing your energy and changing your life today and shine bright. I just had such a beautiful energy flowing, energy transmuting interview with Dr. Sue Murder on the energy codes. Be sure to check out our mini master classes and boot camps by clicking on the links below. Big thumbs up if you like this. Leave your comments to check out more incredible energy filled, energy shifting interviews. Click here, subscribe below. Be sure to click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, and live events with me every Sunday night. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs> Love you guys so, so much.